man-killed computers. Can you believe that there was a time when someone paid good money for these? And now I have them? You see, the world of computers is quite fascinating. Aside from all the cool stuff that they allow us to do, like playing high-end video games, writing really complicated code, or watching YouTube videos all day, it is quite insane how quickly the advancements in computer technology go. Like, no other industry has that. Look at a 20-year-old car. It still looks like a new car, drives about as good as one, and yeah, it may be missing some of the features like the screens, or the cameras, or the subscription services, which... Yeah, trust me, they're a thing now. But a 20-year-old car is like totally okay and usable. Now compare that to like a 20-year-old computer and you wouldn't even want to be found dead using one. I mean, this laptop right here is from 2005, a time when it seemed like having a hard drive of just a few gigabytes was enough to last you a lifetime. But now, like, just this single video would just completely fill up this hard drive space. So because of how fast technology keeps moving, you're kind of forced to continue to buy the latest and greatest gear in order to actually have a fun experience. Sure, with any of these computers, you can kind of like read and write documents or watch the animations of the Windows Media Player while you listen to some music. Uh, but it's not going to be like a great experience. It's going to be really, really slow. And unless you want to play Pachance all day, you're not really going to be gaming on this at all. Which is basically like the unfortunate reality of laptops. Basically because laptops are kind of like these pre-packaged things, there's not much that you can upgrade on them. You're just kind of stuck with the package that you get right when you buy it. However, a while back I made this video about how to build your own computer, which is all about the world of desktop computing, which allowed you to choose and upgrade the components within your PC. But what exactly can you upgrade? Or more importantly, should you upgrade? If you have something like this old PC laying around the house and you kind of want to like upgrade it to maybe play some games on it or just to make it faster. Well, that's what I want to go over today, as this right here is my old 2016 computer on which like I've made a bunch of my early videos, uh, but which has now just been collecting dust since it's really, really slow. So to give you a bit of a backstory, I got this PC back in 2016 when I just wanted to have like a computer to make some videos on and play some games, uh, but I didn't know anything about computers at all. So I just got this from like one of those companies, you can just like gift some money and then like they'll make a PC for you. Now I can't say I've had any real problems with this computer here, uh, but had I known how easy it was to build it myself, I probably would have just built it myself back then, uh, which is kind of like why I'm making these videos right now, so you can learn from my mistakes. Anyway, at the time this thing was like a 1000 euro computer, which made it okay-ish at the time. Like it ran some good games, but nowadays it can't really hold a candle to all the new stuff out there. So in order to see what we can upgrade, let's go and get out this uh, cardboard stuff here. And then let's go over each component like one by one to see what you can generally replace from your old computer to make it just a little bit faster for less money than you would have to spend to like buy a new one. Uh, starting off with, I guess, the CPU and motherboard. Now, as I've said before, the CPU is kind of like the brains of your computer, which also makes it one of the most expensive parts. Now, you'd think with this being such an essential piece of your computer, it'd be one of the first you'd want to upgrade when you want to make it faster. However, I would actually kind of like advise against that for a couple of reasons. First of all, your CPU fits into your motherboard in this place called a socket, which is kind of like a Lego piece. So like, if you have two Le Lego pieces where you can have like, one with one nub and one with like two nubs. You can also have different sockets which have a different number of pins in them which can only be designed to fit like a select number of CPUs. So where I cannot fit like this Lego piece on top of this Lego piece because the no, actually I can. Let's just imagine that these two Lego pieces cannot fit on each other because of different number of studs. In the same way, different types of CPUs will not fit different types of sockets. It only works for a select few. Now the problem here is that generally CPU producers will only support a socket for like one or two generations before changing it entirely. Which means that if you want to upgrade your CPU right here, you either have like only one generation of improvement, which won't really be all that much for the money, or you have to change out the CPU and the motherboard entirely, which will just cost you like heaps of money. The second reason I would not start out with upgrading my CPU first is that generally modern CPUs are quite fine. Like 
I really think that you're okay, even if you just want to do some general gaming. As long as you don't try to push the absolute edge, uh, most CPUs aren't really the bottleneck. It's mostly the other components in the system. Now, one thing that you can do to improve your PC a little bit is change out the thermal pace between your CPU and the CPU cooler. So basically the thermal pace is the stuff that goes between your CPU and the cooler to ensure that it can carry the heat from your CPU to the cooler, which can just like move it away. Um, after a couple of years of usage, it's very likely just dried out. So it will just be nice maintenance to kind of refresh that. Just wipe it away, put some new stuff on there, and then we'll be okay to go again. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, as you can see right here, this thermal paste wasn't really all that, all that new anymore. I remember from last time someone said I wasn't applying enough, so we're gonna go for the standard cross, and then a point, 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 point. And hopefully you guys are happy now with my application of thermal paste. All right, so that's the CPU and motherboard covered. Uh, as I said, I don't really feel like these are the first things you want to upgrade unless you already have upgraded everything else and this part is holding you back. That said though, if you have one of these like AMD Ryzen CPUs, um, be aware that basically AMD is like the one and only company out there that's been supporting sockets for a longer generation. So that's something you could look into, especially if you have an AMD platform. That said, let us move on to the next thing which you may want to upgrade in your computer, the memory. Now, memory is basically the thing in your computer that allows it to like keep a working memory of whatever it's working on. Now, with memory, it's very simple. The more memory you got, the more you can keep open, like more tabs or more things in your game. Memory is also one of those things that you can upgrade within your laptop right here. And as you might be able to tell here, one of the things that happens with memory is that it comes in various forms and sizes. If it comes to looking into memory, there's generally three things that you want to take into account. First of all, you have the generation. Secondly, you have the frequency and its timings. And thirdly, you have the memory capacity. Now, generation is very important because it kind of comes back to like the same Lego connector idea as with the CPUs. Here we have a DDR3, DDR4, and DDR5 memory stick layout. Just make sure that you check with your motherboard like what kind of memory your motherboard uses. Now, secondly, there are memory frequency and timings, which are basically these little numbers right here that tell you how fast the memory is. Now, there's a whole deal of like technical knowledge behind this, where basically frequency is about how fast your CPU and your RAM speak to each other, and timings is like how fast items from memory can be accessed. But to spare you all the boring details, what I would recommend is that you buy the same kind of RAM. So that means that if you buy two or four sticks, you make sure that they're like of the same brand and the same type, such that you know that the timings between them are just totally okay and make sure that you have like kind of an okay frequency in the high 2000s kind of works for me and like I'm more than happy with that. And after that, it's important to look at capacity, which generally is quite simple actually. If you want to have something of like a decent amount of RAM, I'd say anything between 16 and 32 gigs of RAM will be totally fine for you. As you can see, I already have two sticks of eight gigs right here. So basically I have 16 gigs of RAM and I think that's absolutely totally fine for this system. Next up, let's go take a look at storage, which generally is like a lot simpler than memory or a CPU because it's basically just a place where you store all the files your system needs. However, the fact that it's simpler doesn't really mean that there isn't really much to gain here, especially if you're still running one of these like old spinny disk hard drives, which basically like, if you don't know how this works, there's like disks inside here and there's like a read head, basically like an old record player, but then it's like magnetic. It stores the data on the disk and then like the read head has to find the data on the disk and that just makes it slow, fragile and also rather heavy. This on the other end is like a solid state drive and a solid state drive like this doesn't really store data like right here on, on a spinning disk. It basically uses like a board with some chips on it where it stores the data. This is very similar to your smartphone which doesn't really have a disk in it, just has those chips where it stores the data on and because of that it's a lot like lighter, it's a lot more durable and it's also just so much faster. Now personally I feel this is going to be the big improvement for me since basically this hard drive right here uh, basically had a startup time of five minutes or more and I'm really hoping that basically by putting in a solid state drive it's going to be a lot faster. Now you can buy these SSDs as like an NVMe form factor which will go like right here on your motherboard as I've done in like my previous build. However this time I'm going to go with one of these form factors which connects with this cable which is called the SATA cable and then connect it to one of these ports like that. The cool thing about this form factor is that it also fits laptops so basically if you want to make your laptop a little bit faster you can put an SSD in it. 
All right, next it's time to move on to the GPU, which is basically like the graphics processing unit that is responsible for like rendering all your graphics, all your frames and your objects that you see when you're playing your games. Especially when you're playing like more modern games and you want to have them at a high FPS, a GPU is very, very important if you're playing at a very high resolution. However, GPUs are also very, very useful for simulations, artificial intelligence and crypto mining. Oh boy. Now the reason why I say oh boy is that over the last few years, getting your hands on a GPU has been pretty much impossible thanks to like the big boom in crypto mining. Luckily, prices are kind of returning to normal again. So here I have an AMD Radeon RX 6650 XT. This right here is kind of like a mid-range AMD GPU from kind of the previous generation. Now, the thing with AMD cards is that basically they tend to be a little bit less fast than uh, NVIDIA cards. However, they're a lot better in price. And since we're just gaming at like a 1080p frame rate, it shouldn't really matter. I get it if you want to go like 4K, 120 frames per second, but... I've had like 4K monitors for about two years, four years, five years now. I've had 4K monitors forever. And basically I don't really notice the difference between 4K and 1080p gaming. Um, so I don't really need it. Just for casual gaming, I think 1080p is totally fine. Anyway, that's just my take. If you want to go for like a full out 4K build, go for it. But then I don't really think that you want to be upgrading your old PC with like your old components. I think you're better off just like building something from scratch. Just like, Make sure that you keep your eye on the market when it comes to GPUs. Uh, generally, there's only like two brands and whatever deal that you can find online that kind of fits your needs, just go for that. Anyway, let's go and put this all back into its case and then um, move on. So everything is installed right now with the SSD right here. We have the GPU right here. We have the motherboard here with the memory. And as you can see, this case right here is quite old with like the drive base right here, which can hold like this uh, this good old DVD drive. Now with these older cases, what you find is that the airflow is not really optimal because what you see right here, we have the front fan here, we have the back fan here. So the air is kind of supposed to travel like this, but never mind that there is like a metal wall right here where the air is going to hit and then kind of just has to figure its way out here in the system. It's not really optimal, but then at the same time, I think it's going to be totally fine. Because after all, this is going to be a system that I just want to play some fun games on. It's worked fine for me in the past. I don't really mind. That's not entirely optimal. Like, that's the entire point of the video. We just want to make something that's good. The only thing that we want to make sure is kind of the very best would be the power supply, which I've also installed in the case right here. The reason why the power supply is very important is because if you have a bad power supply, then that can cost you your entire system. Think here, for example, if you get power spikes sent to your system, which it doesn't really need, then all of a sudden you can fry your electronics. Or what can also happen is that you cannot deliver enough power that your system needs, so your system might just randomly shut down. Right now, what I'm using is like a 550 watt Corsair's power supply, which overall, I think Corsair is kind of a reputable brand. I've had a good experience with them in the past, so overall, I'm quite happy with this thing right here. I feel like a 500, 550 watt power supply is quite okay for a mid-range build. However, I would keep in mind that if you want to like build your own system, expand your own system a little bit more, that you kind of keep your like calculations on wattage in mind mind, especially a GPU right here can consume a couple hundred watts. It can even have big spikes upwards whenever it's like starting a big heavy load. That said though, I'm quite happy with this thing right here. So um, yeah, I think it's time to test it. All right, so let's power it on. We start it up right now and I'm going to put a counter right here. So we're going to time how long it takes for me pressing the button to me getting into the OS. Last time it took me over five minutes, which I think happened once in a framecast. I don't know entirely. Uh, if someone knows which framecast that was, help me please. But like, yeah, it took really, 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 really long and it's here now. For a first boot, that's not too bad. <laughs> okay, so welcome to this part of the video that was definitely recorded the same day and not like a while later because the entire recording failed. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, here we're in a game uh, where, where the PC is set up now, drivers are installed, everything is fine. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we're playing a game called uh, Apex, I think. And let's see, what does that look like? 60 FPS, if we start moving about... I was hitting 70 at some point. I mean, it's 60 FPS, like, what do you want? Uh, anyway, um, uh, see, gaming experience works. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I plan to do some sort of tests here to be like, oh yeah, look at the FPS, but the only thing that it really says is like, it's 60 FPS, and I guess that's fine. I guess that's the, the FPS test. I, I don't know what else you want from me. It works good for gaming. It's fine for gaming. It's what we expected. It is good, it is great. Unlike the audio from the rest of the video where like, I didn't record with my good, mic so basically it's all like the inbuilt mic of the camera 
I'm sorry that this is like the only bit. The most trashy video bit is the video bit that has the best audio. Fucking deal with it. It's my first video in a while, okay? Uh, but yeah, uh, look at that. 60 FPS, it's good. We have good results with gaming. It game's totally fine. Also in other games, we tried other games. Uh, so yeah, it's good. Now, mo now moving on with the video. I think that the most important thing that I want you to take away from this video is that it's actually quite easy and quite good to like first look at upgrading your PC rather than just like straight up buying a new one since there can be quite a lot of life left into like an old machine like this. And whilst it is indeed a lot of fun to let yourself be sweet and to get like the best of the best gear which can like run 120 frames per second at 4K resolution, a lot of times like 1080p is fine too, which also is like a hell of a lot cheaper. At the end of the day, I hope this video was quite useful to you. Um, uh, I know there's been a lot of like repeat information from like the, the first build your PC from scratch video. Um, but at the same time, this may also be the first video that you're watching of mine. And secondly, I feel there's a lot of like different thought processes involved into like upgrading a PC versus like building one brand new. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching and thanks to everyone out here who's supporting the channel. I know my uploads have been quite scarce lately. There's a lot going on, uh, which you can also tell by today's overtime, which is going to be about a studio tour of the old studio. Yes, as you can tell, the place behind me has changed from like the last time I did one of those videos. A couple months back I re remodeled like pretty much everything and did like a studio tour video about that but I also recorded one like a little bit before that for like the past archives of history where we can see like what it used to be and uh, yeah that's what we're gonna go over this over time. Take a look at how the studio used to look like and yeah if you want to check that out for one dollar a month I make extra videos so more of this stuff if you feel like supporting it and you feel like watching more uh, then that's there for you. Other than that uh, thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you all next time.